Welcome to the Autodesk Fusion 360 What's New for April. This month, we're doing something a little different by combining the What's New content into a single video, just like Fusion 360 combines design, engineering, simulation, electronics, and manufacturing into a single platform. So let's get into it, starting with some general improvements. There is a new modernized sign-in experience which we are rolling out across multiple Autodesk solutions. The new experience automatically opens your default internet browser for logging into Fusion 360, and once signed in, you are transferred back to the Fusion 360 interface. This change should make it easier to dynamically switch between users for added account control, improve the integration with single sign-on policies, and allow users to benefit from using password managers. In the electronics workspace, we have upgraded the graphics engine to provide you with better performance, improved resolution, and support for more advanced rendering effects intended for future updates. With the new engine, the zoom refresh rate for designs with large numbers of connections and many components has dropped significantly. Where previously it may have taken upwards of 95 seconds to refresh, you should expect to see the same zoom refresh to be completed in under 15 seconds. The new driver supports hardware acceleration, utilizing the GPU on your graphics card to offload some of the graphics processing from your CPU. These performance improvements will provide you with a better design experience, sharper images, and will let you zoom and pan your design with nearly instantaneous refresh rates. The mechanical and electronics unification offered by Fusion 360, where they both exist on the same digital platform, means you can easily import complex outlines from the design workspace into the PCB workspace without needing file conversion. Occasionally though, there will be instances when you need to import complex footprint outlines into the library or import company logos or graphics into your design. Traditionally, this was done using a script routine, but this has now been replaced with a new native import tool, which provides more options when importing DXF or DWG files, is less prone to errors, and helps to get it right the first time. In earlier updates, we have improved the pattern and the arrange command where a selected group of assets could be easily positioned in circular or rectangular alignments. For this update, you can now choose a single asset and have it repeated and evenly distributed as many times as needed in the selected pattern. This time-saving feature previously required that you calculate coordinates and set up grids for the manual placement of assets in common patterns. When copying vias or creating a pattern from a via, you have the option to keep the signal name from the source, saving you design time since you no longer must re-invoke the via command and then use the name command to change its name property. We have improved the process of pasting assets, where you will now have the option to paste assets to a specific layer if it applies. This should speed up your design time when you have to repeat the placement of text, logos, or manufacturing details in multiple layers. Connecting to the cloud means you can work from any computer with Fusion 360, including accessing all your electronic design and library files. In this update, we have now moved script files, ULPs, cam routines, and design rule files to library.io, giving you the confidence that no matter where you're working from, you'll have access to those useful routines to keep you productive. And lastly, the panels in Fusion 360 Electronics make it simpler to navigate your design or make changes with minimum effort, which is why we've now made it easier to collapse panels if you prefer to have them tabbed. This quick collapse of panels helps speed up your design time without having to sacrifice design space. Next, we're moving over to the Generative Design workspace where we're taking the symmetry plane feature from the preview into full release. This feature ensures that generative design studies that have symmetric designs automatically produce symmetric results. You're also free to make edits to the design without recreating the symmetry constraint, since it simply carries over. Any outcomes that are generated using the symmetric constraint will have this specific icon 
for identification. The study setting dialog box received a redesign to include notches from low to high to increase control from one generative design study to the next. Consistent levels of detail between iterations of a design are critical for professional engineers and we want your tools to have consistency. The lower the notch you set the resolution to, the faster it will generate, but your outcomes will have less and less detail. Brilliant for creating a prototype, but if you're sending something to manufacturing, perhaps you should move to the higher end of the resolution slider. We know that when you're on a roll imagining solutions to your design problems, wasting time watching results generated in automated modeling was consuming. So, we've removed the need to have the automated modeling dialog window open when it's calculating. Now you can launch any automated modeling studies you need and feel unrestricted to switch to the next item on your to-do list. We've added a couple of prominent messages to notify users if they do not have access to generative design or simulation studies and to request access from their admin. We also took the opportunity to add a message that toggling any body visibility does not exclude it from the solving calculations. Finally, we caught a slight discrepancy in the solver for heat source thermal loads on contact surfaces. We've corrected that to further increase the accuracy of any future thermal simulations you may run. The blend curve functionality is the newest feature to be added to the Fusion 360 component design environment. Curves can be tangent or continuous in order to match any existing geometry. Whether it's a solid body or a sketch, you can create an accurate surface with more precision and confidence. This new feature changes the use of milestones when creating assemblies. Instead of inserting the most recent file save to an assembly, the most recent milestone will be added. We're making this update to simplify the design iteration process, creating a better workflow for design teams. Once a new milestone of a component is created, the assembly will prompt you to update. By using milestones to mark major design hurdles, teams can more collaboratively track progress. MakerSight is a plugin that enables designers to make high conviction decisions on CO2 and cost in real time, utilizing sustainability insights direct within the Fusion design environment. This feature provides designers with important information about the environmental impact of their components helping them make more informed decisions where even the smallest of changes to a design can have massive positive effects in relation to ecological sustainability. As well as providing access to over 300 materials with cost and sustainability insights to drive impact, it also provides technical information on over 50 commonly requested decision criteria, such as compliance, risk, health and safety. This information can help designers and engineers see that their products meet regulatory requirements and are safe for consumers. In the drawings workspace, users will now have the ability to quickly create center marks and center lines on a view by view basis. This feature provides enhanced control and precision, allowing designers to efficiently create accurate drawings even faster. An amazing corner of this update is that you can customize the features that you want to add center marks or center lines to. Holes, fillets, round extrudes and revolves are all able to be toggled on or off depending on the details you need to convey. Even auxiliary views can be selected and the annotations will be rotated as you would expect. Moving on to the manufacturing workspace and coming out of extension preview and into the machining extension is the new option to machine inclined flats with the flat finishing strategy. Designed to automate the programming of flat model regions, this new option automatically detects flat faces within a specified angular range and applies a flat finishing toolpath to each of those regions using a multi-axis simultaneous motion to move between the flat areas to create a single toolpath. This increased automation speeds up the programming of individual flat finishing operations and reduces the chance of missing model faces during programming. Also coming out of preview and into the machining extension is the new Deburr strategy. 
This intelligent toolpath automatically removes the small burrs that are often left on the edges of parts after machining, using 3, 4 or 5 axis machine motion, reducing the need for non-value add processes like manual deburring and resulting in improved part quality. The strategy supports many different types of cutting tool, but it works particularly well when combined with ball nose or lollipop cutters, especially using 5 axis machining. Users have control over which edges need to be machined and which ones should be ignored, with additional controls for edge type, minimum edge angle and tool orientation, as well as multiple clearance height control options to define the safe area that the cutting tool will withdraw to between cuts. Importantly, despite being the first of the new module work strategies to be released inside Fusion 360, Deber uses the same user experience as the other toolpath strategy dialogues meaning that no matter which toolpath engine is being used, the experience is the same, making it easier to learn. The final new toolpath to go into the machining extension is the new corner finishing toolpath. This new toolpath brings together some of the best corner finishing technology from Autodesk PowerMill, combining it into a single rest finishing toolpath that will produce better results and allow for more automation of toolpath strategies on complex feature rich parts. This new strategy holds a number of advantages over the native pencil machining, such as the utilization of larger reference tools to define rest material regions, and options to vary the strategy depending on whether the corners are steep or shallow to improve cutting conditions, with support for multi-axis machining and collision avoidance to produce safe and efficient toolpaths. Following feedback from the community about the benefit of seeing both feed per revolution and feed per minute at the same time, we have reinstated the field as a read-only parameter to help users verify the two output types. Users will also be able to see all four input fields for plunge and retract values in the tool presets, where they remain linked together, automatically updating the linked field upon changes. The checkbox remains as a way to default set the Use FPR checkbox on or off. It's worth noting that the presets will pass both fields independently to the operation. So if you check or uncheck the Use FPR initially, the value from the preset will be loaded when performing that initial switch. Continuing the tooling theme, the preset copy and paste functionality has been extended to allow multiple presets from a single tool to be copied and subsequently pasted to multiple tools of the same type. For threading or grooving turning tools, there are now center images which display the corresponding dimensions depending on the selected parameter field. And for public preview, there is a new dynamic 3D preview of tools and holders in the tool library to help improve tool visualization, with the ability to manipulate the 3D view with pan, zoom and orbit controls and a home button to revert to the original view. For additive manufacturing, a significant improvement has been made to bar supports for SLA, DLP and metal printing, which provides more control over how they are created. There are now options to group supports together, apply base plates to those groupings and brace between them to provide additional rigidity. This allows the creation of lightweight yet strong bar supports, which minimize waste material and decrease print times. What's more, we have also added a negative draft angle to the bar support, meaning that they can be more easily and efficiently removed, reducing the labor involved in post-processing printed parts. For section analysis, the XY, YZ and ZX planes are now automatically visible and selectable, making it easier to choose a section plane. This is especially useful for more organic looking parts, which do not have any planar faces available for selection. And lastly, we have some improvements to the Fusion API, with the ability to create manufacturing setups, add operations, control the majority of the inputs and parameters within those operations, generate their toolpaths and post using the NC program. To help with this, users will also be able to access the tool, template, machine, print settings and post library with the ability to choose items from an existing library and to some extent even edit them in the library via the API too. And that's everything for this release video. 
Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.